All right, guys, hope you guys all having a good weekend. We're talking about QBTS, D-Wave, Quantum, and probably we'll take a look at the IonQ and other uh, Quantum stuff as well. We have talked about this one particularly for a couple times now. So pump and dump, I was telling on May 22nd, where essentially I was looking at this level of a 1945 or rejected pre-market uh, as a resistance. So I think I was talking about somewhere right here. So we did come up today, we didn't do much. And there are a few things I wanna show. So the very first one, yes, these names are pretty, uh, yeah, we all know they're expensive, they're overvalued and all that good stuff. But volume is there, uh, but um, in the last, after this breakout of a gap up, what we had from 1323 ish this is the all time highs was, prior to this breakout so it gapped over and pushed higher and if you take a look at it this is the day when it had printed the largest volume so 300 plus million volume traded and then the next day lower and then uh, following day a little bit of more volume but today on friday i mean it looks like a lot of people took off uh, early because it's um, essentially long weekend we have Today, almost half the volume, so 155. But it doesn't mean that this stock could still squeeze more. But it's just, for me, like, I, I tried to go long, I tried to go short uh, way before, if I switched to maybe like one hour chart, it was so tricky to trade it as a breakout trader somewhere around here, both long and short, I got smoked. So ever since I haven't touched it, so I'm not trading it personally, but I'm watching these particular levels. Essentially, $20 looks like being a psychological level now because pre-market people, I mean, it looks like uh, it did try to push uh, printed $20.30 and then it just flushed down uh, with overall market it was pulling back as well off the uh, your um, tariff headlines were Essentially, S&P 500 was pulling back. Everything was pulling back. But then it just bounced right back up and just finished the day somewhere around $18.80. So for me, um, if it just gets pretty heavy and it just distribution happens here and pretty much chops in this range and never gets back above uh, $20 and starts fading uh, $17.83, then I would sure be looking uh, to the downside. But again, I don't believe at these prices uh, for these quantum stocks, uh, we'll take a look at the rest of them too, the risk is to the upside. I still believe that by trading, swing trading, particularly these trade uh, stocks, the risk is to the downside. Yes, sure, it can squeeze, no problem, but these valuations are just getting a bit <laughs> ridiculous at that point, but again, I don't have a position, so here, here's my list actually. So today, QBTS, slightly negative, okay? So 1.2%. On the other hand, we had IonQ, which was flat. So, and there was a Qubit, which was a bit of a play today, where people just traded it, pushed higher. But if I switch, let me just show you on a daily chart rim shot. So Qubit, way far uh, below its all-time high. So still lower high, we're considering it, okay? So the only strong name could be, uh, we have QBTS, which is still near its all-time highs, uh, versus everything else out there. Rigetti, same thing. It traded at 21-ish level, 21, 24. And today, I mean, it's, it's just sitting at 14. Today, it was 1% up. But as volume fades, so my point is people will start taking a profit and essentially if you're trading options, options will start decaying. Like if you look at the Ion Q, the fact that it had two days of a squeeze today, like half the volume from yesterday, it can't just go back to doing this shenanigans of just sitting in the range or of course it can flush down as well. But for me, no, I don't believe that this is I mean, sure, there's a probability, there's a possibility all the time that this could push higher. So all-time highs, again, still, IonQ hasn't made an all-time high, but this is $11.3 billion company. 
this is just a bit insanity if you just go take a look at the s p 500 and just pull up any other stock that is like 11 billion dollars uh roku most of you maybe even subscribed roku is um at 69 dollars it is a 10 billion dollar company okay uh moderna 10 billion uh bxp this is a reit they pay dividend this is a 10 billion dollar company tall brothers this is a builder it is a 10 billion dollar company at 104 still cheaper than freaking uh ion q which pretty much doesn't do shit uh sorry <laughs> ally bank the davita 11 10 and a half cardano uh what is it what do we have akim akimai tempus uh we have tap or uh, bmr i mean this is just different uh, these they, i mean i don't agree like i mean this is a biotech okay that's fine but there are just so many names out there that are valued at these valuations uh versus these quantum names this is just a bit insane <laughs> so i'm watching all of these names into the next week essentially maybe just do this chop around and maybe even trade with a bit of a uh, tighter range and kill premium uh of course it can come flushing down but for me in order to trade these names uh to the downside i want them at least below their five day moving average so on my chart i'm not sure if you are seeing this is just a line five day moving average right there you can pull it up on your own chart as well but QBTS yesterday, it just bounced off that uh, five-day moving average. You can see where it is today. So anytime stock has a momentum, this is just a perfect indicator for me uh, to watch as a momentum to the upside. So as long as it just catches a bit at these five-day moving average levels, yeah, sure. Momentum is to the upside. It's still bullish for me. No need to fight it. And if you just go back last time when it had a rally like this, you can see how it just as soon as it cracked that five day moving average, people started pretty much shorting it. Instead of supporting it at that level, as soon as stock just reverses the trend, it will become resistant. That's why I like watching five day moving average. Uh, even, I mean, pretty much in any name, doesn't matter what kind of stock it is. Is it a small cap? Is it a hype name? Is it a meme stock? Or is it a blue chip? Nvidia? Doesn't matter. So essentially, anytime any of those stocks trade below their five day moving average, I watch them. Um, essentially, if it's in a downtrend to the downside, if it's in an uptrend to the upside. So QBTS, can it push a little bit more? Sure. But if it does it with lower volume, sure i would be cautious and i would not believe into those moves and it just wouldn't get sucked in and just pretty much become a back holder so here's what i want to show you guys so we're essentially even insiders were dumping qbts uh to, even today they dump a little bit more so essentially friday 23rd okay so you can see all of these guys insiders are dumping slowly and they started dumping very early on actually and uh also if you take a look at it on uh, volume leaders or anytime i see this kind of like cluster of orders at highs this means that are just dumping so they, it, either it's just um anybody who loaded up earlier they're just dumping it or uh it could be just insiders as well but again these orders are very large orders insiders didn't sell as much uh, if you take a look at the clusters even today that came in at 19 dollars, 70 million dumped 28 million dumped 27 million dumped i don't believe that the people are just pushing this much of a size when stock has already gone up uh essentially 200 plus percent in a matter of like 10 trading sessions you can see every time you see these kind of orders it just marks a top that's why i like this tool that's why i bought this tool i'm not advertising it to you so it's essentially for qubit ion q same similar actually ion q was having even um bigger cells 
way early on i was watching it somewhere around these levels people were selling it crazy but if you take a look at it uh let's just take a look at seven days we don't want to look at all the way to april but you will see that even at these levels even just by looking at the price action you can see like at these levels people just started dumping ion q as well somewhere around uh 60 million dollars at 45 26 million and then today it looks like number 47 came into like 23 million so these are very very large orders very unusual but again uh in my opinion these could be the selling this is just a distribution before these stocks go significantly higher or just go back down to where they came from because that's what i say that these are pump and dump stocks so I'm just staying on the sidelines because I lost money quite a bit on these, trying to go long and try to go short. So that's why I want a clean reversal if I want to trade the reversal, but I will not be betting when stock is sitting at the top to the downside. So let's see what happens next week. But as volume goes lower, as people's attention shift to something else, other names, uh, these will these will fade. There's no doubt uh, on my end that this will be repeating the cycles that it has done uh, in the last two waves that it had. So watching these names, essentially neutral at the moment, both. Can it push a little bit more? Sure, it can shake out a little bit more people. But since I traded a lot of options, implied volatility was very high, so they just didn't even make sense to go like longer dated and just buy because i don't like to do like spreads or selling calls or just doing credit spreads i don't like that i just want to trade directionally clean to the upside or downside and that's why i like to buy just calls and puts so i'm not buying any puts because they're a little bit pricey for me but if it if there's going to be like some sort of a day trading opportunity during a day next week sure i might just go in and out but option activity, you can see there's a uh, yeah, little bit more call activity, a little bit less put activity. But again, 175 calls, 105,000 puts. This is QBTS. But if you take a look at it where they were executed, people could have been maybe selling puts and just selling calls as well and just doing a bunch of spreads. But we're not going to dive into option activity because... I believe uh, it has already moved significantly and there's no reason for these stocks to be valued at, a, at these like ridiculous valuation levels where I just already gave you an example. Like Roku worth with so much revenue, only $10 billion uh, and it's cheaper than IonQ at this point. So that's what I'm watching for quantum names going forward, going into next week. Uh, this is not a buy or sell recommendation. This is purely for entertainment and educational purposes only. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.